Hello, I am Jose de la Fuente from the group Sabio at Iraq in Spain and today I will present our work on the immunity to glycan of gall and COVID-19, possibilities for disease control and prevention. Hello. Hello, I am Jose de la Fuente from the group Sabio. This uh, work has been the result of a collaboration between several members of our uh, Sabio group and at Iraq and with uh, Alejandro Cabezas uh, Cruz and Jose Miguel Urra and Carmen Cabrera. At Sabio, our main interest is in the study of the interactions between wildlife, pathogens, livestock, vectors, and humans. And the only way to approach this is through a multidisciplinary approach for the control of infectious diseases. In Spain, particularly at the genomics, proteomics, and biotechnology area, our mission is the control of infectious diseases. How we approach this is by the study of the molecular biology of the whole spectrum pathogen interactions and then translating through different algorithms this basic biological information into disease and control prevention measures. And by studying this host vector pathogens interactions, we propose that they evolve as a conflict and cooperation. It is of course easy to understand the conflict that we can see between vectors, uh, hosts and pathogens, but at the same way there are also a cooperation that translates into some possibilities for the host in the control of these infectious diseases. This theory comes to the evolution of the alpha-gal synthesis. Alpha-gal is a, is a glycan that is found mostly on some uh, proteins and during evolution humans lost the capacity to synthesize this carbohydrate which resulted in an almost unique capacity to produce high antibody titers against alpha-gal. In this way, we see that alpha-gal is not synthesized by, by humans, but it is present in vectors, so for ticks, for example, and in several pathogens, including anaplasma or, or Borrelia, tick-borne pathogens, as well as in a number of uh, viruses that have a high prevalence worldwide. What happens is that in these interactive host interactions, we comes the development of the alpha-gal syndrome as the result of the interaction between the tick and the host. Some individuals exposed to tick bites might develop IgE type antibodies against alpha-gal produced by, by ticks which results in allergic reactions to melon meat consumption and or tick bites or other compounds. But at the same time, human has the possibility to develop IgM and IgG type antibodies against alpha-gal, which might be protective against the pathogens that contain this modification on the surface. The alpha-gal uh, syndrome has been now well uh, characterized in several 
countries with most of the results obtained in the, in the US, but the mechanism behind the AlphaGo syndrome are not still fully characterized and it's part of the ongoing research by our group as well as by other groups worldwide. The IgE response to alpha-gal is associated with the allergic reactions to uh, tick bites that translates into the alpha-gal syndrome as well as into other reaction types such as anaphylaxis, urticaria to uh, tick bites. These reactions or the immune response to alpha-gal is affected by several uh, factors. As shown here, the structure of the alpha-gal antigen is very similar to the blood type B antigen. In other words, individuals with blood type uh, B to develop a lower antibody response to alpha-gal as it resembles a self-produced antigen. These differences translate into the incidence of infectious diseases caused by pathogens that contain alpha-gal, such as malaria or tuberculosis, but not by other pathogens without this modification, such as dengue fever virus. In other words, as you can see here, as the frequency of the antigen A, which is not similar to alpha-gal, increases, there is a significant decrease in the prevalence of malaria and tuberculosis, which is occurs the opposite for the frequency of uh, blood antigen B. This gives us the opportunity of the application of the immunity to alpha-gal for the control of uh, major infectious diseases. As shown here, again, both for, both for malaria caused by plasmodium falciparum or tuberculosis caused by mycobacterium. Tuberculosis, as the anti-alpha-gal IgG and IgM titers increase, there is a decrease in the individuals with positive reactions to plasmodium or mycobacteria, which is not the case for the IgE type response. This translates into the possibility of a correlation between the IgG and IgM type response to alpha-gal and the incidence of infectious diseases such as malaria and tuberculosis. These possibilities have indeed been evaluated in several animal models and as recently reviewed in this paper has shown protection against pathogens such as Plasmodium, Leishmania, Trypanosoma, Mycobacterium and Aspergillus in different animal models immunized with alpha-gal. Now what are the mechanisms behind the immunity to alpha-gal? Again, there have been several animal models in which the immunity to alpha-gal has been characterized. In our group we use the zebrafish models which as humans do not synthesize alpha-gal. In this way they do develop a response to the immunization with alpha-gal which translates for example into a reduction in the infection 
with mycobacterium, which constitutes a model for the study of uh, tuberculosis. Main mechanisms that have been identified are antibody-mediated opsonization of mycobacteria, as well as the activation of immune mechanisms that do reduce the infection with mycobacteria. These again mechanisms have been on proposed in, 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 in humans with some evidence as well as in the mouse humanized mouse model and as I mentioned before in the zebrafish model which can be summarized essentially by showing the intervention of cell mediated mechanisms that do activate the production of certain cytokines and essentially the Th1 mediated innate immune response which might also be considered as a possibility of trained immunity. So the hypothesis from these results is that the immunity to alpha-gal might be used for the control of major infectious diseases. How it might operate is not only by antibody-mediated opsonizations of different uh, uh, pathogens, as shown here, but also through the activation of other immune-mediated mechanisms such as B-cell maturation, macrophage response, complement and innate immunity, as well as anti-inflammatory uh, responses. And we have to consider that the, the antibody response will be effective not only against alpha-gal itself, but also, as mentioned before, against blood antigen B or cross-reactive epitopes that might be present also in different uh, uh, microorganisms. These uh, previous results then conducted us to the study of the, of the antibody response uh, to this uh, glycan as a correlation with, with uh, COVID-19 disease uh, symptoms. The immunity to alpha-gal was characterized in COVID uh, uh, patients at different stages, including asymptomatic, at hospital discharge, of hospitalized, and also at the intensive care uh, unit. As you can see, there were clear markers of inflammation that correlated with disease severity, increasing from hospital discharge to intensive care unit patients, and also a significant increase in the IgG type antibody response to the uh, coronavirus spike protein. When then we looked at the immunity to alpha-gal in these individuals compared to uh, healthy uh, controls and samples collected before the uh, onset of the, of the COVID-19 pandemic, in general you see a decrease in the anti-alpha-gal antibody response as disease severity increases again from health individuals to uh, patients in the intensive care uh, unit. And also there was a differences in the composition of the anti-alpha-gal antibody types. 
as you can as you can see by in health individuals the highest amount corresponds to IgG and IgM types while in the intensive care unit the main representation of anti-alpha-gal antibodies corresponds to IgA type. These results can be summarized in this slide in which we have the total anti-alpha-gal antibody titers from the highest to the lowest level and the representation of the different uh, antibody types against this glycan. In healthy individuals we see uh, an anti-alpha-gal IgGm and IgG type response which naturally occurs in response to bacteria in the microbiota that contain this modification. In other words, all uh, uh, humans do contain antibodies against alpha-gal that are actually very abundant. Now, after the infection with the SARS coronavirus type 2, we then see in infected individuals the, an effect on the gut microbiota that translates in this bacteriosis that might affect the composition of bacteria containing alpha-gal. Then on asymptomatic individuals we see an increase in the IgE type response to alpha-gal which has been associated as previously shown with allergic reactions to alpha-gal. Then when we look at patients at different uh, stages from hospital discharge to intensive care unit we see at hospital discharge an, an increase in the IgG response to alpha-gal which is associated with a protective response. While in hospitalized patients we see no protective response essentially with a disbalance in the anti-alpha-gal antibody composition. While in patients in the intensive care unit we do see an increase in the IgA type antibodies against alpha-gal that are associated with a pro-inflammatory response which has been described in the COVID-19 patients. In this way, the immunity to alpha-gal in, in COVID-19 goes from the response in healthy individuals mainly driven by Ig protective IgM and IgG types. Then in asymptomatic patients we we'll already see not only the presence of IgG and IgM but also of IgA type antibodies and the activation of complement and innate immunity. At hospital discharge there's uh, an inflammatory uh, uh, response. The levels of antibody against alpha gals is reduced as well as the activation of the innate immunity which disappears in hospitalized and intensive care unit uh, patients in which we do see an increase in the inflammatory uh, response particularly in the upper respiratory uh, tract as well as a reduction in the protective anti-alpha-gal antibody response and an increase in the IgA type response in the, in, in the individuals of the intensive care, intensive care unit. 
These results led us then to the proposal of boosting the immunity to alpha-gal as a way to uh, contribute to the control of COVID-19 and other uh, pathogens. One of the outcomes will be limiting the zoonotic transmission of the coronavirus by coming from still unidentified animal host that do synthesize alpha-gal and thus the virus may contain this modification on the surface. Then we will have the possibility of an antibody-mediated opsonization. Nevertheless, considering that the virus might contain also other cross-reactive epitopes by boosting the humoron cellular immunity to alpha-gal, we will have not only the possibility of limiting human-to-human -human transmission of the coronavirus, but also the antibody-mediated opsonization of co-infected pathogens that might also affect the outcome of COVID-19, which then translates into reducing the symptoms of the disease. However, we need to consider that other host and virus derived factors involving COVID-19 might also affect the immunity to alpha-gal. And these factors might be related to the virus, like for example, violence or environmental persistence of the, of the virus, or factors related to the, to the host, like the blood group and the susceptibility of the population to the uh, virus infection. What we have learned from COVID-19 also connected to the immunity to alpha-gal. It could be summarized on the need to of international collaborations to address the many challenges posed by this pandemic, also to support the scientists to address this, these questions, to guarantee access to food supplies and health services to the whole population, a sustainable development and a one health approach to search a violence interaction between humanity and nature, and of course, a more holistic approach to disease prevention and control. In this way, the immunity to alpha-gal might be an opportunity for the control of major infectious diseases, considering that it could be an antigen that can be administered to boost the immune response to this molecule, both the antibody and the cellular mediated response, even through the use of probiotic or postbiotic compounds that are easier to administer and could be also used in under situation without a healthcare service. Uh, uh, at, at, at full uh, 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 composition. Today I will finally, I would like to thank you for thanks all the members of our group, Sabio, who has contributed in different way to this investigation, to all our collaborators worldwide and the funding and support to this research from the community of Castilla of La Mancha research uh, project and the University of Castilla La Mancha. We present our work on the immunity to glycan of gal and COVID-19 
possibilities for disease control and prevention. Hello.